said, put the tomatoes here and the lettuce here. And maybe over the capsicum here. there. And the capsicum over there. And the eggplants too. How are we? Hello, Hi. How are you going? <laughs> Good. Well, you gave me a call about some veggies. You've got some problems going yes. on here. Well, you've got a lot of veggies here. Uh-huh. You've got a big property, haven't you? Yes. Yeah, you hope so. <laughs> We're going to get rid of this lawn here. We're out in Essendon here with Raffaella, yes? Yes. And your... Paolo. Paolo, your husband? Yes. Yes. Now, you've been here for how long? Um, about six months in six this months? place. Yeah, and you're and looking, we... to, yeah, and yeah. looking to plant out the veggies. Yes, we finally cleaned everything up and now we want to plant some veggies, so right. we're hoping to eat from our garden. All right, well, let's have a look around in the garden, see what sort of space you have there so we can establish how many plants we can physically put in this area because I think you might have to actually dig up the lawn area. Ah, oh, really? <laughs> Oh my God, don't say that, please. Sit back, relax and enjoy the show. What was here before? Um, what did we have here? A whole lot of rubbish, like yeah. just construction materials because the house got renovated. Okay. Um, but we've just finished cleaning up and we took a whole lot of twigs that were on the fence and dry leaves. So you basically cleaned up the whole backyard? Yes. yes yeah. Big mess it was beforehand. You didn't Big know mess. this garden existed? Or you, you sort of guess well, there was something here? we knew there was something here, oh. but yeah. All right, what's all this ash here? Have you been burning some timber and all that? Yes, I've been burning leaves and timber. Yeah. So you've created some wood ash here, some charcoal, which is excellent for the garden. Wow, so, great. Yeah, didn't know that. you didn't know that, you were doing that. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> we're going to use some of this and put it back into the garden. We've got four by three here, we've got another little area here, so we're planting here? Yeah. All right, here's a shovel inside. See how dry it is underneath there? Yes. Yeah. So we've had a lot of rain in the last few days, hoping that it's soaked right through, but it's only gone in about three inches, 70 mil, 80 mil. So down below where the roots are going to grow, the plants are going to suffer still, so there's not moisture getting in there. Normally we say don't dig the soil over if it's been already composted and used before, but it looks like this has been sitting for a long time. Yeah, yes. apparently it's virgin soil. It's never been planted, apparently. That's apparently. what we were told. Okay. So what we need to do is actually break it up, get some airflow back into the soil, add some organic matter. You got it in compost? Yes. Of course we do. Yes. Yeah, you got yes. compost? Okay. So you're going to turn this over like this for me to loosen it up. Okay. Right? And just keep going everywhere. Right, loosen it up. Not like that with a hand, but with a foot. So you yeah. got to get down below. Okay. She's got the bigger yeah, shoulder, no, mate. I That's need a bit heavy for her. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> well, I'll get out of your way. Embarrass myself. Is Senora yeah. inside cooking something? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Let me go say hello. Oh my goodness! Here I am wanting the garden, and I can't even put the shovel in. Hello. Hi. How are, How are you? you? I'm very well. Your name? Angela. Angela. What are you making here today? Well, in my father's dialect, I come. I was born in Foggia, San Marco in Lamas. Mm -hmm. And my mum town, uh, my dad uh, town, we call it Strajanade. On my mum's town, they call Cavadete. Okay. And they're done with plain flour, warm water, and salt. What's I the roll process? It like sure. that. Yeah. You roll it. Roll it like that. That's why it's called stretching out in my father's diet. Okay. Because You're you stretching it. Stretching it and yes. pull it. We do the sauce yep. with garlic and oil, fry yeah. the garlic. Okay. Make sure you don't burn the garlic. So this is. You're going to have a zucchini. I've got to have a zucchini with it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's and, zucchini. Yeah. Tomato sauce puree you made? Yep. Use um, the tomatoes. It's simple, but it's so nice. It is simply beautiful. That's what it it's is. Really simply simple, beautiful. But it's a beautiful sauce. So you're not having any. <laughs> yes, I'm talking to you. Summer's here finally, folks. And make sure you check your plants out because you'll have signs of dead disease and damaged wood. Aluma piculata, it's a beautiful hedge here. I've got a lot of dieback. back. I've got to cut it out so I can make room for the new growth to come through. Do the same, check your plants out and clean them up, otherwise they won't fill in properly. Now remember, our Christmas garden habit, that's $5,000 worth of garden prizes. Entries close tomorrow. You've got to be in it to win it, so sign up today and have your chance to win yourself $5,000 worth of garden prizes. From Eva Silly. Maresi. If you like Vasili's Garden, then you'll love the summer edition of Vasili's Garden to Kitchen magazine. Available at all good news agencies. Subscribe now at vasilisgarden.com. In previous shows that we've had, we did do some information for you 
on what foods to have when having chemo because a lot of people when they get chemo uh, really is quite a challenge to their body. Obviously that is what their health and uh, the body needs to be able to start recovery but one of the side effects is nausea and an inability to actually keep food down. I found that there's a combination of foods that if we either have them individually or we put them together, people can tend to be able to at least get food into their body. Anyone that you know who's having chemo and they're struggling with what to eat, well then we've got a few segments coming up for you as to what foods to have. So let's start the ball rolling here with maybe one of the best foods because it also gives a nice amount of energy and that's pumpkin. So a good way to start would be baking, getting it into a roasting pan because the flavours will come out of the product and sometimes can be a little bit more palatable. Now what you do need though is to make sure that it's well cooked because if you're not feeling like something to eat, you don't want to be have to munch on things that basically are a bit hard to break down. So start thinking about roasting some pumpkin for your loved one who doesn't want to eat and just put that on a plate. Now, alongside that, sweet potato is a great one to combine. These two foods collectively are easy to digest, one. Secondarily, they are full of energy and vibrant nutrition. So these two, they are palatable, they break down well, highly nutritious, and can just slip down and start getting that healing happening. Now, one really nice way of working with the sweet potato is to make crisps. Now, one of the things is that people say, oh, I shouldn't have fried foods. Let me tell you, if you're in the middle of chemo and you can't eat and you want to have a crunchy sweet potato fried chip, have it, please. It's highly nutritious. Use a good quality oil, either coconut oil, something along that line. Cut them very, very, very thinly. Just drop them in, let them cook for a little moment, take them out on paper towel, and then start eating them. We've got to get that appetite working. So folks, these two combinations are wonderful and energy giving at the same time and highly nutritious to assist the healing process. So folks, until next time, please find happiness in every moment. All right, when we turn soil over, and everybody out there who sees a veggie garden and they turn the soil over regularly, they'll tell you the first thing you do is not walk over what you've turned over. Ah. So you've just compacted that down there. And over here it's been compacted as well. So you start. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just step on everything. You look like you've just gone <laughs> randomly everywhere. Oh, there's a bit over there, let's go dig it over. So we start from this corner, we work in rows, and you work your way through, or you work this direction, okay. all the way through. So you do one row, and you keep going all the way back, then you come back up here and do the second row, and you work your way back. So that way the soil is left untouched. Then we start adding all the extra stuff into it. And we can put all this leaf mulch here. That's why I've got this rake here. Just grab it all like that. Yep, get out of the way, see all this. All right, let's get this organised. You get the barrow, yeah. put the fresh compost in there. Okay. I'm going to get you to shovel some of this charcoal into here. Okay. We've only got two shovels? Yes. Um... Okay, so I need one of those shovels and I'm going to turn this over for you, get it ready. Well, who's going to put the compost in the bin, in the wheelbarrow? Me. What do you need, that one there? Yeah. All right, you can rake that over and bring it over this way okay. for me. Okay, let's get into it. Okay. I hope that pasta's ready. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose I have to finish this first. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just put it here, Vasily? Yep, just bring it there like that. I'll, no, I'll grab it from here ah. and spread it out. The benefits of wood ash puts the carbon back into the soil and helps plants produce better flowers and better fruit. And veggies, obviously, in this case. Up. Now you can start on that side if you like. Okay. Yeah, and just make sure you don't step on my work. Yeah. 
We've turned the soil over twice, added the leaf mulch, the carbon back into it, and some green compost. Now, we did that purposely because this soil's been sitting for so long, so we don't know what condition it is underneath there. But now, as we've turned it over a few times, you can see the texture's been added. And it's so important that we add this texture into it. Without that, your plants have got no chance of survival, and they'll need to be artificially fed, and that's using synthetic fertilisers. That's something we don't do here. Leaf matter, compost, carbon, green waste all goes into the garden and top dress it with mulch and give it a good water with a little bit of worm juice and your plants will love you forever. The best way to look after your plants is with Vasili's Easy Hand Spray. Order your sprayer now, available only at vasilisgarden.com. If there's one thing I love, it's berries. I love to eat them fresh on their own, add it to a breakfast bowl with yogurt or even with a scoop of ice cream. I even love them as a smoothie mixed with some wonderful nuts and grains for that extra texture. Today, I'm making a smoothie with almost all of the above. It's from my second book, Healthy Habits Blend Until Smooth, and I'm sure you're going to love it too. First, I have a cup of blueberries and three medium strawberries. Berries are one of nature's most treasured foods. They contain many healing properties and have health promoting benefits. Eating berries daily will help relieve stress and fatigue. Berries are also full of antioxidants. They contain vitamin C and help fight heart problems. Next, I have one tablespoon each of activated chia seeds, linseeds and pumpkin seeds. Nuts and seeds naturally contain moderate levels of phytic acid, which protect nuts and seeds until germination. Phytic acid as well as enzyme inhibitors can however contribute to digestive system irritation and nutrient deficiency if consumed raw. So by soaking and rinsing these foods first will reduce the anti-nutrient content and help your body to absorb and digest. I'm also adding one kiwi fruit and including the skin. This magnificent fruit can improve digestion by helping the body absorb protein and clear toxins from the colon. Kiwi fruit are an excellent source of omega-3 and the vitamin C and E content is great for keeping your skin healthy. And the rest of the ingredients are one cup of homemade almond milk, a teaspoon of manuka honey, one teaspoon of raisins, and one cup of ice. Kuving's SV500 vacuum blender has the latest vacuum technology that detects the amount of air and removes it from the container. So what are the benefits? Well, you end up with a super smooth beverage with brighter colours and no separation of ingredients. The SV500 has an ultra high strength 3D stainless steel blade and a whopping 3.5 horsepower motor, able to pulverise any ingredient you add. This is absolutely delicious. The combinations of flavours in the smoothie are truly wonderful and very enjoyable to drink. If you like this recipe and many others, you'll find them in my Healthy Habits Smoothies book, Blend Until Smooth. Enjoy and see you next time. Oh, look at this. We're already enjoying it, eh? Mm -hmm. yeah. oh. This is the end of that. This is the result. Food, yeah. Wait a second, I want some and cheese this too. this food comes from La Puglia. We are from La Puglia. Whereabouts is that? Um, in the, the south, the heel of the boot. The heel of the boot. So that's where my dad is from. So um, Ziangela is my dad's sister and my mum is from Sicily. You can really taste a home-style, home-cooked meal. Mm -hmm. When it's all made fresh from scratch, yeah. that's, that's the best. Nice. We get back out into the garden, do some okay. planting. We've yes. got the compost in the ground so the plants are ready to start eating too. Great. The soil's been prepared, we've got the compost in and now we've got our seedlings here. Now this area here gets the most shade in the garden. So we can't put our tomatoes, cucumbers, uh, eggplants in here because they won't get enough sunlight to set fruit properly. The flowers won't get okay. enough heat on them. Here we'll put all our leafy greens like our lettuce, rocket and things like that. So about 20 centimetres apart is comfortable. You can go a bit closer if you like, but 20 to 30 is comfortable. Okay. So we'll start from this corner and the idea is to do a little hole and plant each one and then just ruffle the soil over the top once you finish. But I'll separate these. Have you ever separated these before? No, never. Okay. So I'll separate these for you and show you how I position them so then you have a guide of how everything works. Okay. So you create the little template. 
This is our seedling. Yeah. We're separating it carefully, so you, you'll feel a little bit of a tear going on in the roots when you're separating it, if it's overgrown. So we'll position one, and watch how I just gently pull it apart mm -hmm. with the root ball. It's a plug. Do you want to have a go at the other ones? Yeah. So even if we break the roots, okay. Just carefully breaking them apart so you can separate it evenly as best you can. And yeah, that's it. So you haven't torn it off, all off completely. How good is that? All right. So you do that. And I'm going to position these for you, about there, like that. So we'll dig a little hole like that, put it in. There you go, there. Okay. See that? I'm like that, hold it up and just push the soil around it carefully. So you're going to go now and plant all this up. Okay. One of us is going to separate and the other one's going to position. I'll separate, you position, so you get the idea. Okay. If you enjoy watching Vasili's Garden Well, I'm proud to announce that you now can become a Vasili's Garden member. All you need to do is go to our website and sign up today at vasilisgarden.com. So what do you get by becoming a member? Well, you get four new issues of our magazine per year, released seasonally and delivered right to your door. Plus, online access to all our magazine back copies that are packed full of great stories, gardening advice and delicious recipes as well. But wait, it doesn't stop there. By becoming a member, you also receive access to all our previous TV episodes from 72 as well as our C31 and SBS series as well. That includes all the guests and places I've been to, all things natural with Dr. Sandy Rogers, healthy habits with Eleni, and great gardening tips from our friend Jason. Become a member and you'll have access to our members only discount. That's up to 50% off our online products. That's right folks, up to 50% off guaranteed. And with Christmas only around the corner, sign up to become a VIP member today and you'll go into the draw to win a $5,000 Christmas garden hamper. That's right folks, $5,000 worth of all your favourite gardening products from Sea Salt, Falco, OCP, Howls, our Easy Hand Spray, our books and DVDs and much, much more. You've got to be in it to win, so what are you waiting for? All the gardening advice, entertainment and products you need available to you all at the one place. That's VasiliesGarden.com. For me, Vasili, yes. What it is missing is mulch on top, a straw. Uh -huh. A bamboo mulch is ideal, or a lucerne or a pea straw on top. What that does, it keeps the moisture in the ground, so you don't have to water every day. Maybe once or twice a week with the mulch, it may require three times a week watering without the mulch. Okay. Now you do have afternoon shade, so you're not going to have the scorching sun drying it out too quickly, so you may get away without the mulch in the short term. But in the height of summertime, 100% you'll need the mulch around the base. Now, when it comes to watering, the high end of the garden will need more water than the low end because you'll find gravity will feed down the moisture and right. these will get more water than everything else up the top end. The worm juice, Oh, actually. you've got some worm juice too? Yes. Yeah, so mix that nine parts, one to nine or nine to one. Nine parts water, one part juice. Yeah. Without knowing how strong this is, that's the safest solution, uh, mixing rate. And give it a water maybe once a fortnight. or Just maybe like a shower with a the water A light shower cap. over the top. Let it soak through, go through the foliage because the plants absorb all the nutrients through the leaves as well. We'll go and position the other plant so you can go and plant that one as well. Okay. All right. You want your tomatoes here, huh? Yeah. To make a salsa <laughs> to <by> my daughter. <laughs> okay. So, all right, we'll do three rows. But this time they're going to be further apart, that is. Okay. Three per row, that is. Yep. So I'll get you to position the first one. Yep. Just You go put it down, I'll tell you if it's too close or too far. Don't take it out yet, just put it in place. Go to your left, you've got plenty of room right in front of you there. That's, right that's it there. The next one, right in the middle of the garden bed. That's it. And this one, Things. too close to the other one. So further up? Yep, that's it there. That's okay. it. Next one. Over here? Yep. Look at the lines. Do you need a string line again? No. Yeah. You're right. All right. Come this way. Yeah, that's better. And it's okay to mix all the different varieties? Yeah, yeah. Doesn't matter. Now, we've got our tomatoes first two row. We'll put our eggplants here. Okay. All right. So next, same spacing. Do you like moussaka? Yeah. Yeah? So oh, good. You're going to make one for me because you've got so many yeah. egg plates here. <laughs> I think we can make one for the whole neighbourhood. <laughs> our eggplants are in place. Next, we're going to line up our chilies. Now, for those of you out there saying to me, why is he putting them in rows? You know, because I kind of like the visual of it. There's not many of them, 
all right? And the gardens aren't that big. So if the insects do come in and attack one plant, they don't have to go too far to get to the next one anyway. So having them next to them right here, side by side, or two metres down the path there, is not far enough to say that they are safe from insect attacks. So in this case here, they're nice and clean. The two are learning about gardening. They'll be able to analyse the plants one next to the other and see if one's performing better or not, if there is a problem, and then they can deal with it. So that's nice and neat. You can see some order there. Yeah. It helps you understand the growing process. Some sweet basil and lettuce leaf basil along the edge here, all the way down to the end. And now, more importantly, we've separated your creepy crawly plants from all these wonderful bushy type that grow. And right over there is where your zucchini, pumpkin, watermelon are all going to grow. That's going to become a jungle. Wow. It really is. And I hope it gets hot enough for them because they need a bit more afternoon sun than they really got there. But I'd prefer them there than over here because they're going to make a mess of your garden here. Right. So that way you keep them away from all the other structured plants. Get in there, thin them out, take some of the leaves out so you can get some air inside. Don't let it come too bushy. Okay. But don't worry about it trailing out to the end. If it gets too far, what you need to do is called blind tipping. So once that leader grows, and it's all the way down here, Paolo, you see grumming over here, don't step over it, cut it off. Okay. So once you cut it off, that starts to fruit. It makes the fruit for you, okay. the vegetables to grow. Otherwise, it'll just keep growing until it gets down to that corner over there. Oh. Yeah, all right. Okay. So start planting. We have Raffaella and Paolo now planting. They are green thumbs as such, and maybe a little bit brown too because of all the planting they've done. Yeah. <laughs> this is what it's all about. Get out there, get your hands dirty, get involved in your garden, understand the soil texture, add what you need to to get it alive and active, and then plant away. It's never too late to start, and it's never too late to plant your garden, just like this. Now they've done the veggies on this side, they've only got one garden bed left to do, which I've left to them, which are the zucchinis, cucumbers and watermelons and pumpkins for them to enjoy. You yes. told me earlier on when you first got here, this place was just a bomb shelter. Yes. There was a mess everywhere. Yeah. The garden yeah. was a mess. Yeah, and you're happy now you can see a bit of green coming back. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Well enjoy it, it's going to be an abundance of produce coming through this place, so expect the overwhelming surprises uh, and enjoy the challenges. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. And Pleasure. thank you for your help. No, no yes. problems at all. Well folks, get out there in the garden yourself from Eva Silly, Maresi.